Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about parallel line proofs. Basically, how do we use parallel lines in proofs, such as statement reason tables? So let's get started with the do now. If line L is parallel to line M, as shown in the figure, then what are the angle measures of angle BCD and angle BDC? So as you can see here in the figure, we already have some of the angle measures. For example, what is the measure of this angle over here? Well, we know that these two angles are vertical angles and therefore they're equal in measure. So we can say that this angle must be 70 degrees. So since we have this to be 70 degrees, then what can we say about this angle? Well, this angle also must be 70 degrees. Why is that 70 degrees? Well, because these two angles here are the alternate interior angles. And we learned the theorem in the previous YouTube video that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent, or we can say equal in measure. Well, how do we find angle BCD? this angle here. Well, there are many ways to find the measure of that angle. We, for example, could use corresponding angles here, and we know that corresponding angles are equal in measure. So in order to find the angle measure for this one, first, we need to find the measure of angle B. So it turns out that measure of angle B is just 50 degrees, again, because this angle is vertical to this angle. So now we can find the measure of this angle here by subtracting 70 and 50 from 180 degrees because all these three angles add up to 180 degrees because we have a straight line L here. So here we obtain an angle of 60 degrees. So therefore, this angle over here must be 60 degrees. And the reason is, if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent or equal in measure. So in our previous lesson, uh, I introduced the following parallel line theorems that can be used to solve algebraic problems and in statement reason tables. For example, if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent or if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. Or if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then same side interior angles are supplementary. And if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. And if a transversal is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other one also. So let's see how we can use any of these parallel line theorems in proving using statement reason tables. So let's look at a proof now. Here we're given that segment DE is parallel to segment AC, as shown in the figure. So let's actually annotate this in the diagram first, so we know that these two segments are parallel. Well, we also know that angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent, according to the given. How do we prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4? So let's set up a statement reason table first and then add the first given in the statement reason table. Again, as a reminder, we want to use the givens only when needed. So for example, in this case, we can use the first given to conclude something. Well, what can we conclude here? Well, we know that here, since we have two parallel lines, we know that angle 1 and angle 2 must be congruent. So let's write this in. And the reason is, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. We can see this from the figure that angle 1 and 2 are corresponding. In a similar manner, we can also say that angle 3 and angle 4 are congruent because of the same exact reason. Well, what else can we do at this point? At this point, we're done with concluding anything from the first given. 
So let's state the second given. So according to the second given, angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent. So what do we notice here now? Well, here we have angle 2, which is the same as angle 1. We also notice that angle 3 is the same as angle 4. So we can now simply substitute here. So according to the substitution postulate, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. Let's now look at another example that is slightly more involved. According to this example, we want to prove if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the bisectors of a pair of alternate interior angles are parallel. So now we have to first think about, okay, what are the givens and what are we trying to prove here? And maybe sketch a diagram. So the hypothesis is our given that the two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So we know that the lines are parallel. And we want to prove that the bisectors of those pairs of alternate interior angles are parallel. So let's visualize this first. So let's imagine we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Obviously, we are going to have these alternate interior angles here that are going to be congruent. Now, according to the statement here that we want to prove, uh, we are bisecting those alternate interior angles. And the bisectors look like this, as shown in the figure. What we want to prove is that these bisectors are actually parallel as well. So how do we do this? Well, it is very important to draw a diagram with labels on it so we can transcribe the givens and what we want to prove in terms of the points that we have labeled on the diagram. So let's say we have the following diagram here with all these points labeled. Then our givens are line AB parallel to line CD, line ACU bisects angle FGB, line RT bisects angle CFG, and we're trying to prove that line SU is parallel to line RT, according to the diagram. So here is our statement reason table with the first given. So what can we conclude from the first given? Well, if we look at the lines here and we have those two angles that are shaded, we know that it creates alternate interior angles that are congruent. So here we can say that angle FGB is congruent to angle CFG because if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Now we can convert to measure and say that the measure of angle FGB is equal to the measure of angle CFG because of the definition of congruent angles. Well, why are we converting to measure? Because here we're talking about bisectors as the other givens, right? So we can either use the definition or the theorem. If we use the theorem, then we are working with the measures, right? Because the theorem states that we have one half the measure of its original angle. So therefore, what we can state for number four is that half the measure of angle FGB is equal to half the measure of angle CFG because of the division postulate. Why did I divide the previous step by two? We want to make use of the theorem pertaining to the angle bisector. So let's state the second given that line SU bisects angle FGB. And now we use the theorem that the measure of angle FGU is equal to one half the measure of angle FGB because a bisector of an angle divides the angle into two angles, each of which has measured half that of the given angle. And you probably can already see why in step four, I divided by two. Now for step seven, let's state that line RT bisects angle CFG, which is a given. And for step eight, we can say that the measure of angle RFG is equal to one half the measure of angle CFG. So what do we notice here? We notice that the measure of angle FGB over here is the same as the measure of angle FGU here. And similarly, we also notice that the measure or half the measure of angle CFG is the same as the measure of angle RFG here. 
So there's something we can do here. We can simply substitute. So now we know that measure of angle FGU has to be equal to the measure of angle RFG. Then we can state that angle FGU is congruent to angle RFG because of the definition of congruent angles. So let's look at the diagram at this point. Here we're stating the following, that angle FGU, which is this one, this angle over here, is congruent to angle RFG, this one. So as you can see here from this picture, these two angles are the alternate interior angles for the lines SU and RT, respectively, if we look at also transversal HE. So let me highlight this better. So here we have this line and this line, and we have this transversal, and now we have these two angles over here, basically angle RFG and angle FGU that are congruent and alternate interior angles. Now, let's think about this. Here we're not saying that the lines are parallel, but we're trying to prove that they're parallel. But logically speaking, if you have two lines cut by transversal and the alternate interior angles are congruent, then what must be true about those two lines, basically line SU and RT? It must be true that they're also parallel. So it's basically the converse of the theorem that states that if two parallel lines are cut by transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. And the converse will be as follows. If two lines are cut by transversal, notice that we're not saying that they're parallel, we're just saying if two lines are cut by transversal and the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And with this, we have proven that line SU is parallel to line RT. So that's basically it for today's lesson. Again, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.